Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Hmm. Let's come into a comfortable place. You might situate yourself sitting up or lying down. Whatever is comfortable. And become really, really aware of the ground beneath you. Become aware of your bodies and the different qualities of sensations that are arising within your body. Notice the breath as part of the activity within the body, the activities arising in the moment. And notice the substantial support as you let go of your weight into the ground. Substantial support. And begin to explore the stillness and the silence in relation to your body. Where is stillness? What is calm and still? What is unmoving? And once you found that, allow it to permeate your experience on a somatic level, on a physiological, physical level. And let that be your companion. throughout the entire practice today. And hopefully it becomes your companion throughout your days. The more you invoke it during practice. Take a breath in and a breath out. One more time. And again, to slowly find some small movements now while 
Maintaining awareness of that stillness within you. And starting to link the movements now with that sense of stillness and with the breath. So you might open your eyes and just start to kind of experience yourself in your environment without coming out of yourself, without coming out of your own experience. Usually when we open the eyes, we tend to leave ourselves to cater to our external environment. Let's see if you can start to develop the capacity to hold both. We'll open the practice together with the sound of OM. And we are going to eventually all make it back onto our backs. So if you'd rather remain reclined when we open the practice with the OM, that's OK too. Bringing palms to heart space. Find that stillness again and bow to it while we join our voices together with the sound of OM. Take a deep breath in. Slowly make your way onto your backs and you can turn to place your heads on this side of the room while your legs are on the, towards the paintings. And we'll go ahead and start to stretch the body in this way. Pull your knees into your chest and then drop the feet back down onto the ground under your knees and just pull them in and drop the feet back down under your knees a few times. Just starting to kind of feel into your core. And then at some point, grab a hold of the knees as you press your sacrum down into the earth and rock yourself side to side. Let the experience of this rocking massage the back body and then continue to stretch the different areas of the body, moving into some hip circles so that you circle the knees out and bring them back in towards the center a few times in different directions switching direction. Now plant your left foot under your knee and expand your right leg up and then bend it again, bringing knee towards the chest and then re-extending it back up a few times. You might encounter some stiffness or tightness. So the dynamic stretching, that repetitive motion of extending and flexing will help in that. And eventually cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Allow the knee to go outwards a little as you press into the opposite leg. And then take some gentle motions side to side, allowing the hips to continue to stretch while you incorporate some movements for the lower back.
if it feels good to lift that left knee off the ground while you rock side to side or come into a full static stretch here then go ahead and do this Maybe this becomes a circle that you make the circle with the shape that you're doing here. Good. Plant your left foot back down under your left knee. Re-extend your right leg up and interlace the hands behind the thigh. Circle your ankle through. And in the other direction. Then allow that le right leg to drop all the way to the ground and lift back up about five times just up and down tuning into that lower back and the right hip flexor while you fully activate the left foot firmly into the ground and take it to the other side. Plant the right foot under your right knee, pull your left knee towards your chest, and then extend the leg up, bend it back towards the chest, and back up. As you bend it towards the chest, it might move to the left a little, and back up. A few more dynamic stretches. And then take your time to cross that foot up and over. Solidify the ankle against the other leg. Activate your sacrum back down into the earth and start to rock side to side. All the while, notice the tendency of the attention to go back up into thought or to check out, out of the present experience, the present direct experience, and return back to your experience. As you arrive back to the center, Make your way slowly, potentially into some circular motions. And potentially replanting that right foot down in the ground as you extend your left leg up, interlacing the hands behind your thighs. Crunching the toes, flaring the toes, circling through the ankle joint. And maintaining awareness of that which is still still within you, that which is calm within you. And begin to drop that leg, that straight leg, all the way down and back up. And 
Notice how the lower back might lift off or there might be some kind of arching that happens when the leg drops. And see if you can accentuate that pressing down into your lower back, onto the earth, re-engaging that deep core center. Mm, beautiful. Let's extend both legs down and extend both arms up and find a really, really big stretch. And then make your way slowly up into a table pose. And now start to become acquainted with your spine through arching and curling. And I want you to really start to think about your neck and incorporate it within the experience. Maybe there is this opportunity of rocking the head side to side, circling through the cervical spine. And then slowly press your hips back slightly, keep your chest lifted, and keep your fingers on the ground while you lift the base of the hands a bit. Then kind of do the opposite, lifting your fingers off, pressing. And then maybe each hand at a time, stretch the wrist a little, flipping it under. From here, you're going to replant the palms forward, curl the toes under for downward facing dog. The legs should be pretty good here. We've done a lot of warming up, but if they're still feeling tight, then alternate between downward dog and a child pose a bunch of times. And take your time to settle in your downward dog. Take a bunch of movement side to side, rocking of the hips and pedaling of the feet and the legs. And take a few back and forth motions, alternating between a plank and a downward dog. Are you still aware of that calm stillness within you that we found at the beginning of class? And can you keep returning to that and letting the activities within you be held by that? Good, once you come back into a downward facing dog, take a breath in. And a breath out. Take your right leg up towards the sky with the in-breath. On the out-breath, the knee comes towards the chest, curl it. Inhale, lengthen it back. And again, knee to the chest. Two more times, in, out. In. 
hand out, stepping forward, coming to warrior one. Rise upwards to make fists with your hands and circle your wrists through. And then find goalpost arms as you hinge forward, coming out of your lower back slightly and then opening up through the heart. Open your throat for an in-breath. On the out-breath, we're going to take the opposite motion and just kind of curl the spine a little, pressing those arms forward and looking down towards your knee. Again, goal post palm. Open the heart. In and out. Two more. In and out. Last in breath, and last out breath. Reach two arms overhead with the inhale. The exhale takes you into warrior two. Let your body alternate between a reverse warrior and a side angle a few times. And here I like to give the freedom in these repetitive motions to extend the front leg as you reverse your warrior sometimes to let the hip flexor be part of the experience of bending and extending. Also continue to lubricate the knee joints. So in this phase of class, we are tuning into the water element and finding the fluidity of water while at the same time taking these repetitive motions. Multiple joints are involved. Finally, reverse your warrior with an in-breath and on the out-breath, come back and find your way into a runner lunge. To heel the right foot towards the right some more so that you're having this experience of feet hip distance apart. Then lower the back knee to the ground as you open your torso up with the arms overhead. Inhale, tuck tailbone under. Exhale, twist to your right. Come back through with the in breath. Exhale, twist. Two more, in and out. Last time, in and out. Replant the palms down and re-extend that front leg up and back. This time, a three-legged dog with the knee dialing open and hip dialing open. Stay super active in your right hand for three. Root down more through the foot and the hands to extend that hip open a little more. Then release back down. Firm up the placement of the feet, the placements of the hands, and let that firmness allow you to relax your neck and shoulders. And the left leg rises, breath in. Breath out, knee to the chest. Again, three times. Last time, breath in. Transitioning from here to your warrior one. Solidify the placement of the feet. Let that openness in the heart be found. Notice how we could have the potential to collapse in our lower back. Take a look at me. This is a potential, right? But we're not going to do that. We're going to stay forward out of the lower back, but only open through the mid and upper back. Breath in. Breath out. 
Curl, extending those arms forward, look down towards your foot. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Last one. As the arms reach overhead, breath in. On the breath out, warrior two on the other side. Take those alternations between the reversing the warrior and a side angle, accessing the side body, lubricating the different joints in the body. While finding the water element within you, flow like water. and sense the fact that you are mostly in your actual physical body, 75% of it at least is made of water. I don't know the exact amount, <laughs> but I know it's pretty high up there. Good, as you finally reverse that warrior, inhale. On the exhale, coming through into a runner lunge, to heel the left foot enough to the side, dropping the back knee to rise up with a strong core. Breath in. On the breath out, twisting through to the other side. Coming back with the end. And out. In. And out. Two more. Last one. Inhale back to center. Exhale, plant the palms down and extend the front leg up and back in another three-legged dog. Maybe the hip dials open here. Maybe you keep on bending and extending your leg. Beautiful. Release the foot back down for downward facing dog. Reaffirm the rootedness of the hands and the feet. Shake the head no and yes. We invoke stillness within yourself. And let it move through. Bend your knees a lot, press your hips back, belly touches the thighs as you look forward and walk forward into a forward fold. Relaxed jaw, cheekbones. Maybe a grabbing a hold of opposite elbows to invoke a bit more weight downwards towards the earth. Let's take three more breaths. Wonderful. Release your arms and slowly roll up. 
Some of us might place the hands on the thighs and press up slowly to rise, ensuring there's no pressure on that lower back. Good. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Plant your palms at your heart space. Take your feet hip distance apart, making sure that you have a strong foundation. And we're going to sink down into a squat. Here I want you to also again pay attention to my tailbone. We don't want it like that, arched and yanked into the lower back, but nice and neutral in a neutral spot. When you rise, draw the elbows back, press the hips forward, squeeze your butt, and when you lower, re-extend, ensuring that neutral pelvis again. Inhale, exhale, in, out. Squeeze the legs a lot as you rise. Squeeze them again as you lower. For five, four, three, Two, one, lower down, and pulse up and down. Relax your shoulders for five, four, three, Two and one. Arms overhead, breath in. Maybe a little bit of a back bend, pressing your hips forward. And then coming back to neutral. Belly, heart, hands. Coming back through to a calm nervous system. And notice how your heartbeat is slowing back down, evening out. Notice the ground pulling you back down for centering. Good, energize the hands and reach them overhead, breath in. On the breath out, bow, hinge from the hips in a forward fold. In for a halfway lift. Out as you plant your palms down, step back to downward dog. From downward dog, shift forward into a plank pose. Inhale here, with the exhale, Lower the knees, then hug the elbows to the midline, lower halfway, then all the way down. Open your heart, goal post arms again for that baby cobra, breath in. On the breath out, press back up through plank or table to downward dog. Take the right leg up to the sky with the in-breath. On the out-breath, bring the knee towards your chest, curl it. Inhale, lengthen it back. On the exhale, step it forward for your crescent lunge. Keep the feet hip distance apart. Take a moment to reach those arms overhead. And notice the effect on your shoulders. If your shoulders get tight, you always have the option to take goal post like we did before. 
Take a deep breath in. And a breath out. One more. From here, we're going to launch into balance into a warrior three variation with the hands at heart center. Shift your weight into the front leg and slowly let that weight come fully into the front while you either potentially keep your toe on the ground or lift that left leg fully up. Keep your gaze down on the ground in front of you about a couple of inches or a few inches forward. Dialing the left hip down for three, two, and one. Land yourself back in a crescent lunge. Then open yourself back up to a warrior two, but this time on the opposite leg so that we're taking some of that pressure off of the right leg and finding warrior two on the left side. Expansive arms with the in breath and on the out breath a side angle lunge. And now come into a place where you're holding the posture not too tightly and not too softly. Come into the middle. Two more breaths. But as you return back to the center, we're going to find our way into a wide-legged stance facing the wide edge of the mat. First, take a moment to rock your hips side to side in this stance. Then take a moment to circle through the hips in a very, very subtle way. It could be tiny little micro motions. Then let that eventually take you into a wide-legged forward fold. Let there be this moment again of taking the edge off like your big fold to kind of regain access to a deeper place by coming off your edge you inhale and on the exhale just giving it a bit more space into the fold Deep breath in and breath out. One more time. And on the out breath, come on up slightly and walk your hands towards your right foot. Come back into a runner lunge this time. And rather than keeping your hands on the ground, See if you can shift your weight more into the front leg again and draw those arms back. Then take them into thunderbolt where the left arm extends forward and the right arm extends back. For three, two, and one. As you rise back up into balance, either stay in a warrior three variation 
or release the left hand down for a revolved half moon. Keeping the hips aligned, the left leg extended as you twist for three, two, and one. Release the left leg next to the right into a forward fold. Breathing in and breathing out. Sink down into a chair pose. Reach your arms forward for three, two, and one. From here, we're coming into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon on the right side. So you're going to plant your hand on that block or water bottle. Shift your weight into your right leg and open up to the opposite direction. For three, two, and one. Square the hips, stay in balance, and land the left foot all the way back into a crescent runner lunge. From here, press back into downward facing dog. Inhale, with the exhale, shift forward for plank pose. Take a, your plank here, either for five breaths or take your way through your Shataranga Dandasana Vinyasa, either with the knees to the ground or lowering halfway through for upward dog or baby cobra. Deep inhale. Long exhale, all of us meet back in downward facing dog. Taking it to the left side for your crescent lunge. Left leg rises up, breath in. Breath out, knee to chest. We'll do it one more time. Inhale back. On the exhale, shift forward for crescent. Solidifying feet hip distance. Finding your roots. Grounding your roots. Taking the arm placement that works for your shoulders. and not budging from what feels right to your body, regardless of what anyone else is doing, and whatever the teacher is cueing. From here, we're going to come into that warrior three. Again, shifting your weight into that front leg, and then deciding if the right leg can lift, or if the toes need to stay on the ground while you still use the strength in that front leg. Stay really firm in your leg and in your gaze, keeping your focus in the middle too, not too focused not too unfocused. Lightly land the right foot back into a crescent. Then open up to the side to find warrior two on the opposite leg. Re-expanding your heart open here with the inhale. The exhale hinging through to a side angle.
Notice how gravity has the tendency to pull you down and see if you can leverage the heaven chi, that spaciousness above you to kind of counteract the pulling down so you can find that place in the middle. For three, two, and one, rise back up to the center. Both feet face the wide edge of the mat. Take some rocking side to side of the hips. And let's find a heart opener here. So the feet aren't so far apart. We're gonna press those hips forward. Squeeze the glutes. Try not to collapse into the lower back like I showed you before. And then draw the sternum up. And imagine there's a bar beneath your rib cage that's horizontal and wide and you're going up and over it. For three, two, and one. Return back to the center and come into a wide-legged forward fold. I'm going to come into some twisting motions here. Plant your right hand underneath your face and lift into a half lift, long spine, left hand on the hips. Then twist to your left. And if it's helpful, extend your left arm. Deep breath in, long breath out, and back through to the middle and to the other side, taking it nice and slow, twisting from your mid-back section, then expanding the upper arm. Slowly release and relax. We gain access to that calm within yourself. And let it continue to penetrate the different muscles, the cells, the organs. And slowly coming back into a halfway lift as you walk your hands towards your left leg into a runner lunge. We'll lift the chest again to come into a hovering runner lunge. And find that thunderbolt as the right arm extends forward. Both feet are super active in the earth. Left arm extends back. Notice if you're collapsing inside your joints and use the strength of the muscles to lift out of your joints for three, two, and one. Shifting back into balance onto that left leg. And if you have a block, maybe dropping the right hand on the block. 
staying here in balance or twisting towards the left. For three, two, and one. Release the right foot next to the left. Come back into a forward fold. I'm going to try to open the hip in the other direction now. First, coming into a chair pose as you sink down into your hips. Open up through the heart for three, two, one. Then, taking your way back into your left leg and opening the hip through to stack your right hip on top for Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. Breathe it in. And out. Come back through to the center. Stay balanced as you square your hips. Palms come back to heart space and you land that right foot all the way back in a runner lunge, stepping back in a three-legged dog. And we've completed the sequence. Take a breath in. On the breath out, shift forward for plank. Take it in. On the out, lower down, Shataranga Dandasana, halfway or all the way. Open your heart for a baby cobra or up dog. Back to your downward facing dog. Bend your knees a lot. Press your hips back with the in breath. Look forward. Out breath. Walk or float. Forward fold. And rise all the way up to stand. How is it going? Woohoo! That was intense. We were in a zone. Did you feel the zone? We were in a zone. I loved it. All right. Let's take a tree pose just to finish up our balances a little bit and reground our attention in our bodies with the earth like a tree and I love the tree pose because it really kind of reaffirms that rootedness with the ground find all corners of your feet on the earth then shift your weight into your right leg you can take some motions first throughout the knee side to side to find external rotational motions around that left hip and eventually stack that sole of the foot either below the knee or above the knee palms come back to heart space and you kind of hug yourself inwards like a swaddle Keep your gaze on the earth about a few inches forward from you or a few feet forward from you. And this really helps me tremendously to find that soft gaze. Take your time to expand these arms sideways. Breath in. On the breath out, arms overhead, and release. And we'll take it to the other side. Maybe take a moment to just uh, kind of 
rotate through your right ankle so you give it some love feels really nice before shifting your weight back into that other leg and taking some movements on the other hip Gain access to your left side of your glutes so that it can support the pose and come into tree on the other leg. And if you hug firmly leg against leg and pull the navel in and up and find your drishti and your breath, you're in a solid place. At some point, see if you want to kind of open the heart a little in your tree while you keep your gaze really steady. It's really important for the gaze to stay steady, especially if we're moving in balance. Back up. And back to the heart. Beautiful. Yay. Let's just shake it up a little. Shake up your wrists. Let that left ankle circle through a bit. And just let the body also shake a little into a lymphatic shake. <sighs> Any residual tension that's still in the body can kind of release nice let's come on down onto our bellies find one back bend there I like to come into a bit of a quad stretching here first. So just bending the right knee to grab a hold of your ankle, elongating the knee back and hugging in towards the center. No, no, switching legs. Mm -hmm. Now, take your way back down, and we're going to find a locust pose. So, open your chest. I like to begin with some tenting of the fingertips down, just to kind of keep my lower ribs down on the earth as I open my heart. Legs are strong and active. And then lift the legs and also lift the arms. I like stretching the arms sideways or back. Keep your gaze on the ground and the crown of the head drawing forward for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Feel uh, the heart itself Fully let go into the earth. Let the chest muscles find the support. 
this unconditional receiving quality of the earth. And also, while you're at it, let your belly hand down any tension it's holding. And your legs. Let's take it into one more back bend. I'm going to cue you into a sphinx pose. The elbows can rest under the shoulders and you can isometrically press the elbows down and back as you draw your chest forward and up. Legs are active. From here, you can either stay in sphinx or bend your knees to grab a hold of your ankles behind you for bow pose. Now you might just hold the ankles and stay here for a quad stretch or press back to open through the heart a little bit more. Again, pressing back with the feet is an important part of the pose. For three, two, and one and relax let the body recognize that it is safe sometimes when we work up the heart rate a bit too high, there's the uh, potential for the nervous system to rev up. So we want to keep mindful of the nervous system throughout the class, maintaining that sense of calm and stillness and holding while we are strengthening the body, the physical body. And strengthening the mind. And in fact, a calm nervous system can aid in that transformation while a revved up nervous system can weaken the alchemy, the potential of the alchemy. Beautiful. Take your way Slowly onto your backs. And we're going to come into a bridge pose here. The feet underneath your knees, your arms alongside your torso. Strong active arms in the earth, strong active feet in the ground. Tuck the tailbone under and begin to lift upwards and upwards and upwards into bridge pose. Find the quality of this back bend to include an opening in the front of the body without over extending so that you're not bulging out your rib cage. For three, two, and one, slowly release. Ah. 
Let's bring the knees so that they're coming towards the chest. But you're going to block them by pressing your hands against your thighs. You're going to activate that sacrum against the ground, flat back, and activate the skull, the back of the head, against the earth. Nice long neck. And press the legs against the hands and the hands against the legs. As you breathe in and breathe out, keep breathing for five, four, three, two, and one. Release the feet below the knees and take another bridge pose. Stretching the belly might feel really nice here. And a slow release back down to the ground. Cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh like we did at the beginning of class. And this time going a little bit deeper in the stretch by pulling the left knee up towards the chest, grabbing a hold of behind the thigh or the shin. If you are really missing your prone pigeon, you might take that instead. Otherwise, stay here, allowing the joints to remain stacked so that you're not really losing the alignment, pressing down into the ground. Letting the shoulders relax. And creating more and more space for the breath. Keep your left knee towards your chest as you extend your right leg up towards the sky. Yeah, good. And lower and lift that right leg a bunch of times. You might start to hear a clicking around the right hip a little bit and pelvis. Let that movement create its own adjustment. And we'll take it to the other side, planting your right foot on the ground, cross the left Ankle on top, either remaining here or going further into a reclined pigeon. Mm. 
Once again, directing attention intentionally, directing attention intentionally to the stillness and silence. And finding that silence in relation to your body. And the more that we train the mind to look for the stillness, which is really ever-present in relation to our bodies, it starts to become second nature as we go about our daily lives. It becomes this healing balm that permeates your beingness. We can resource it within ourselves. Keeping your right knee towards your chest as you extend your left leg up towards the sky. Active lower back, active head on the ground, and an up and down motion of that left leg. Good, now take your way into just an elongated pose. So your legs are stretched all the way down, your arms are stretched overhead. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And release. Making your way into Shavasana. Finding the ground fully. Experiencing the relief that comes with a still experience on the ground. Directing attention back towards that which is still. And letting 
that which is still neat and blessed. All of the arising activity. So that all activity is allowed. Received unconditionally by that stillness. Mimicking the experience of unconditional holding of the ground. Finding the ground of being within you. Chidananda Para Brahma Para Shotam Para Matma Shri Bhagavati Sametha Shri Bhagavati Namaha Om Shanti 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 Take a breath in together. And a breath out. And slowly begin to find some motions. If it feels good to remain reclined throughout the end of class, you can do that. Or you can start to move the body a little more to roll over onto your side for a few moments of stillness there. And if you rolled over onto your side, you can start to rise up back to your meditative seat. And 
as you bring back your awareness to your heart space, or gently draw the hands towards the chest. And bowing to that which is still within all of us, which permeates all of existence. And bowing to that which moves throughout existence, all of that which arises within us, within nature. And holding the two together and inviting the heart space to open up towards all other beings. And holding all other beings within the healing and sacred space that we have created together. And we close with the sound of Om. First, a cleansing breath. Inhale. Thank you for allowing me to teach you today. The great spirit in me bows to the great spirit in you. Namaste. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for practicing with me. And I'll see you next week, hopefully.